Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Oh, this really zoomed in. Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. So, this was a busy week for me. Not in the garden, just like in life. So, the vlog consists of a lot of like 30 second to 2 minute clips that don't really add up to anything. So, I'll do the time stampy thing for the things that matter. Like, I went to a nursery very, very, very briefly. Went to a bunch of Lowe's. That'll all... You'll see what that's all about. And then, um some talk about carpenter bees and whatnot. Just didn't have time to like settle on any one specific project and focus on it. So it's just for those of you who are just here because you're like, listen to me ramble, this is, might be the video for you. But if you're somebody who likes a lot of consistency and things that are well thought out and planned, this is this thing gonna be the video for you. I mean, really most of vlogs aren't. It's a vlog, it's little clips of what goes on throughout the week. And um, I try and focus on projects this time of year, but just didn't happen, didn't have time. And I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out where I can point my camera for things that aren't going to give away what's going on in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great weekend, and life's just fantastic for you. My fan broke. Well, at least the part that holds the fan up. So for now, I just have a fan chair. Oh, it is an absolutely beautiful day the high today is only like 70 i like the heat but not for like intense yard work <laughs> bugs the gnats and mosquitoes have been relentless look at everyone's coming along so great it's only two days from when i ended the last vlog so these planters have really come up nicely you can see here why um i want to go with the vistas because they can grow fairly well in part sun and there's not, it's not going to be even growth because the lighting is kind of warped. I was going to dive right in and start moving with some projects, but two lawn companies showed up at two different neighbors' houses. So I was like, maybe I should go ahead and run my errands. No, very simple errands. Nothing complicated. In last week's vlog, I picked up this pot. It was the only one they had at that particular Lowe's, so I could only get the one. God, okay, I need to wake up a little bit. Okay, but so here's the deal. I got that from my Robolini palm, my pygmy date palm, who is, he's just chilling down there right now. I also need to repot my windmill palm. This guy, it needs it very badly. This one's pants fell off. The bottom of the pot's completely gone. And I have a third back here that also needs to be repotted. So it'd be nice if their pots match for a change. And I really like this pot. It's a good pot for the price. I like it a lot. So I need... Three of them, but I could only find the one at that Lowe's. So I'm gonna go to a different Lowe's and see if I can find them at that store. And if not, then I, I don't know, just figure something else out. But these windmill palms, they're out a lot of the year. I mean, obviously things like the Adenidias and the spindles and the other palms, they can't take the cold. But the windmills, I don't normally bring inside into my grow space until like, I'd say sometimes usually like the first or second week of january so mid it mid december to like the second week of january and they're usually back out by like march 1st so they only spend a couple months inside so it would be kind of nice if when they're out they have matching pots and the pots are in right now i got in clearance years ago they just they don't look good so i'm gonna see if they have those pots i don't really need any plants i do need a couple of the super tunia vista silverberries but that's about it. I've been trying to keep my eye out for some Majesty Palms, but uh, haven't seen them. Actually, I think they might have some. Okay, that might work. Okay, it is incredibly crowded here. Vlogging is going to be a challenge, but I don't see the pot. They have the sandstone and the chocolate, but neither of them are... I've been calling that chocolate. I don't know it's brown. I'm not seeing it in the 24-inch, though. The selection here is really great, though. I've, they really stepped it up this year. They, at the Lowe's I normally go to, they had them on like a display, like an end cap. I'm not seeing it. Okay, these Super Tunia Vista Futures look nothing like the ones I picked up. They're actually pink. Could they be the Vista Bubble Gums, but mislabeled? Because it's, it's a lot of them. I mean, the ones I got are practically like red. Oh, that's confusing. So were mine mislabeled, or are these mislabeled? Because they look like the bubble gums to me, just maybe a little bit darker. See, some of those are a lot darker. I'm confused. Ooh, Cebu Blue Pothos. 
aka beautiful home decor. <sighs> Can't get a label on them still, but pretty. It doesn't look really nice, doesn't it? Oh, I got here just in time for plants. Yeah, nope, no pots. And those Medici bombs were like $35. They're only three and a half feet tall. That's, that's pretty pricey. Oh, I'm actually leaving Lowe's and I didn't get anything. I didn't really vlog in there. It was just way too crowded. There was very rarely a moment where there wasn't somebody standing right next to me. And there were a lot of screaming children. So I didn't see any reason to subject you guys to that. So I guess not, not gonna repot the windmill palms, but I can do the mule palms and get that done. Who the heck parks in someone's driveway? That is so rude. That was the repair person because... Is your refrigerator running? Cause mine's not. Again, third time in less than a year that this thing is broken. So I got here just in time for the repair person and he's my new favorite person. Cause guess what? Recommending I get a new fridge and here's why. Mold, which is something I complained about before because it wasn't keeping things cool enough, wasn't drying things out, and I was like, what? This is insane. So, finally, a new refrigerator. Tucker, aren't you excited? Aren't you so excited? Yay, Tuck, we new refrigerator. Because in the 18 months, probably like 20 months, I've had this fridge. It's been broken for a total of like six or seven out of all of those. <laughs> Done. Never again. Good boy, Tobes. Oh, it's a happy day, Toby. New refrigerator party. Yeah, let's go outside and celebrate. Why won't you open? Open. Hey, Toby. You coming, Tobes? Toby. Toby. <laughs> Come on, Toby. Are you coming? You coming? There he is. Hey, Toby, baby. I just want to say hi to Pumpkin real quick. Hey, Pumpkin. Busy getting the hair, hair nice and cherry. Get in the chair nice and airy. Pumpkin. Okay, she doesn't feel like talking right now. That's fine. Pumpkin. Nothing? No? Busy being a cat? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. I'm coming, Toby. Yeah, I don't see her changing her mind anytime soon because, you know, she's a cat. Look how lovely this is coming up. Again, only been a few days. So pretty. So, since I couldn't find those pots, it's not the end of the world, just won't repot those today. It's, it's okay. But I had mentioned last week's vlog that I had a couple of queen palms coming up from Florida on a truck from my palm tree dealer, which means I can go ahead and get the pool pots done, which I really kind of want to do right now anyways. So we can head on down to the greenhouse where the, oh, that was gross. Dogs are gross. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go down to the greenhouse and pick up those queen palms. I'll try and film some there. It just kind of, it's a little awkward because it's not super. Oh, I just had like the most intense sneezing fit and it felt fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, the green, it's like, it's open to the public, but not really like you're supposed to call. So I don't like, I, we'll see what happens. I'll either show you guys around a little bit or uh, we'll just be back with palm trees. Who's we? Just me. I mean, it's not just me. It's you guys too. You know what I mean? Take the next right onto Noel Place, then your destination will be on the left. Your destination is on the left. Here. I couldn't turn my GPS off while I was pulling in, so it was probably kind of annoying, sorry. Look at the palm trees. So, I really couldn't film in there. There was a lot of talking going on. and uh, But I'm in an area where there's another Lowe's. It's going to be hard to park the car. I'll show you why in just a moment. I think I might have to take up two spots like a jerk. Look at that. I mean, I got it tied up fairly well. But it's just kind of nerve-wracking that everything's going to come flying out of the car. But there's another Lowe's here. So, I'm going to check that. I guess I can... Nope, no reason to lock the car, is there? Just gonna run in and see if they have those pots. Look how big these lemon lime philodendrons are. Wait, is that what these are? Why well, you got strapies on you? The, uh... No. They're not golden pothos. They look like lemon lime philodendrons, but... With... Huh. I don't know. They don't really look that good anyways. Their mantisy palms are a lot bigger, but I think the car's kind of 
full as far as plants are concerned. Woohoo, lots of fuchsias. Looking pretty too. Just the little ones again. That's so weird. Oh, oh, I see one. Uh, how am I gonna, didn't, where am I gonna put this? I guess that'll work. This is it was in my trunk. I always have a jacket and some towels and plastic and jumper kit. That's all right and shotgun with me now. Okay. Next 30 minutes is going to be a little bit scary for me. Um. A, now what? I've got these kind of rigged up in here. I don't. I don't. There were like a bunch of people helping me get these in the car. That I, I can do it. <laughs> It wasn't too bad. I, like I said, had asked for a 15 to 20 gallon size. These are much, much, much bigger than that. Way bigger. But like I said, I'll make it work. Okay, so here's what happened. I ended up having to go out last night to look at refrigerators. So once I got these palms out of the car, I had to take off. And then uh, there were storms in the forecast for last night. It's the next day, by the way. Uh, there were storms in the forecast for that night, and then the next day, today, it's this afternoon. So, around like 8 o'clock at night, it was getting dark, and I was like, I have to do this. It's not gonna be in the vlog. That's okay. All I did was unpot them. I threw down a tarp, laid them on their side, pulled them out of their pots, loosened the roots up, threw them into new pots, which are these kind of gray plastic pots that slide right in here so that in the fall time when I need to bring these inside I can just lift that right out it makes things a lot easier that way and then that, that's it I lifted them put them in there I still need to plant the petunias and the sweet potato vines around them you can see these palms are on their side these are the mule palms that were in there I set them down next to it and then the wind and the storms knocked them over but yeah that's pretty much it unfortunately the pots are a little bit warped from just you know years sitting out in the heat and everything so I couldn't quite get it to be like perfectly aligned down there but I think that that's okay I do not like these birds Just drop their poop everywhere <sighs> bugs but I'm thinking that it doesn't really matter because once the petunias are growing down the side and then those sweet potato vines won't even really be able to see that so yeah, these are the Supertunia Vista Bubblegums. I'll show you the tags here in just a minute. But all I'm going to do is just lightly loosen up the root memory from the bottom and just plop them in here. Really easy. I'm going to do one on each side. Like that. Well, you'll see in just a second. Wow, that was really, really quick and easy. Come in here, water them in, and that's it. So water them in very, very heavily, even though it just rained last night just because it's gonna help kind of distribute the soil around in there a little bit more evenly. Hey, all done. I like it, it'll do. I know that palm tree's still on that side with their, there's supposed to be really bad storms later on today, so I'm just, I just leave them because they'll just keep getting knocked over and that's not good for them, so they can just hang out there for today. But like I said, this is the uh, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum on each side. I did that in the same thing in each of these pots. And then this is a Sweet Caroline, I held on to the tags for a reason, Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. Full to part sun. And then there's all of its info there if you want to pause it. Last year I did these, oh I should show you that, hold on. Guys, I'm a mess this morning. Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. That's the petunia that's in there. I've said like five times. Anyways. <laughs> Last year, I did something very similar in these pots, but it was a different type of sweet potato vine. I don't remember which one it was, but it had like the oak-shaped leaves to it. I like the Sweet Caroline. Let me look at this one. The Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime because they have the heart-shaped foliage, which to me, it reminds me a lot of like a philodendron. More of a tropical vibe to it. And I did, I planted just one of those last year and it didn't grow like quite out of control in comparison to the other ones that I planted. That also could have been a lighting situation though. Because what happened last year is the sweet potato vines just took over these planters and basically choked out the petunias. So I also, I'm pretty sure last year I did three sweet potato vines and three petunias in each one because I was like, I want this to look pretty right now and immediately. So I'm thinking that hopefully by having it this way, each one has their own little quadrant to grow in and I'll just have to stay on top of the sweet potato vines with my snippers so that they don't choke out the petunias. But yeah, they look pretty good. Things are just so messy because I got all this other stuff I need to do. I was going to go ahead and pot up the mule palms down here also, but 
those gray pots that were down there, those are the only two I had. The ones I used as an insert, I need to repot the mule palms. So I ordered two more, and they won't be here until next week. So that'll have to wait until next week. But then those will be done, finally. It's really easy, it's just that I needed to repot those mule palms. It kind of made things take longer than I would have thought it would. Okay, and the next thing, I talked about this last week, I need to repot this Robolini, this pygmy date palm. It is very root bound. It's far, far, far over dope. Jeez, the wind's just knocking everything over. And I was going to use those brown pots I showed in the beginning of the video, but I don't know. I just, I don't think that's a big enough bump up. That's only going to add like maybe an inch to the outer diameter. Palms like to be root bound to an extent, but I, like I said, I just don't think that's enough. So over here, I have this planter, which I picked up in a vlog several weeks ago. It's 32 inches and it was really cheap. So I uh, have found another nursery that's kind of far away. It's like 45 minutes or so that has these. So I'm gonna go and try and get another one. I got this one to do some lotus plantings in, see if they have them, they said they did, and try and pick one up. So let's go do that. Oh, someone's having the time of their life. Cute. I forgot, it's like really pretty out here, the hills and everything. I think that the area I'm going to is hilly and pretty. I don't know. We will see. It's not even, it's is outside St. Louis, about 45 minutes from St. Louis County. I don't know how many miles. But when you head south of St. Louis, like, like southeast of St. Louis, it's really hilly and really pretty. Lots of rolling little hills. This particular highway has an awful lot of semi-trucks, so I'll probably just snap this up in just a second so that I'm not holding my phone, because they make me nervous. Even though I'm like never actually looking at my phone when I'm holding it, still. Just better safe than, oh my gosh, we should go to Six Flags. That sounds like fine, let's do that instead. Oh, they put trees in front of the Six Flags. There we go. You maybe can see it. Like I said, I have no idea. So here we go. It's a minute of nothing. You're welcome. That was probably nowhere near as scenic as I thought it was going to be. It was mostly just semi-trucks. And I had to <laughs> turn the camera off because the billboard started getting... In half a mile, turn right onto East 5th Street. Okay, I turned the GPS off. Why are you talking? But yeah, it was like pro-life, pro-choice, and then grown-up bookstores. And then it was just like really just stuff that I don't think was YouTube appropriate. Oh, look. There it is. Take the next right onto East 5th Street, then turn right. Almost there. This is a long drive, guys. Um, a nice drive, but a long drive. Stop on red. That's the hard part. So make sure you come to a complete stop, and you know, you don't even got to do it. Got to do it. Take the next right. Okay, the GPS is gonna keep talking, so I apologize for that if that's coming through. Wow, what? In 1,000 feet, your destination oh will be on the right. I'm right here. Look at this. What a fun entryway. Wow, this place is huge. Pretty landscaping. Sorry, a bunch of the car hood is in the shot. My um, tripod mount just doesn't want to adjust upwards. I'm going to get it to do that. Okay. Wow. Your destination is on the right. Is it? My destination is on the right. Are you telling me I'm here? I didn't know. What a nice surprise. Ah, all right. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. This is elaborate. Lots of stuff in here. Tons of stuff. I'm impressed. <laughs> All of their bathrooms funny. It was a long drive. There's so many cute things in here. This is cool with the crystals and the wood and everything. Oh, <laughs> hello. How you doing? 
Um, okay. <laughs> Y'all just won my heart. Ooh -hoo -hoo, greenhouse! Cool. Okay, look at these. These are nice, big, shallow pots. This would be great for succulents or cactus or, I mean, really anything. That's a really good price, too, for how big they are. Nice baskets, too. This is only $11.99. Hey, that's a cool pot. Great price, too. Also a good price for the inset. That's this banana here. Look at how cute this is. I have to vlog in very short bursts because this music is very loud and it's going to ruin things. That is a big stack horn fern. Whoa. Ooh, looking good. Got a bunch of the proven winner stuff here. This is one I hadn't seen from them before. It's the Bombshell Pink Mandevilla. That might be kind of cool. What does this say here? 18 to 24 inches. Doesn't look like it has much of a spread, so it must be more of an upright. Like a Diplodinia Mandevilla. That's cool. Oh, $10 though? I don't, mm, I don't, I don't even know you. I feel like that came out weird. I wonder if they have the Amazel Basil. I've been trying to find that one. Oh, that is a gorgeous petunia. It's much more pink in person. Ooh, these are really cool too. The pottery prices are fantastic. I love this texture on the side. Oh, these are really cool. Look at that foliage. Senecia candicans, look at that. Angel wings. So pretty. It's like shiny and fluffy. Wanna see the tag? 10 to 12 inches, zones 8 to 10, sun depart. Beautiful. I don't know what I would do with this, otherwise I would grab one. These are super cool. I would love to tour this entire place, but the forecast is changing. They're saying that we're supposed to have like really dangerous storms and um, looks like it's moving up. I feel a little miss on myself, so I really feel like I should hit the road and head home because there are some kind of windy roads I have to go through. So I'm going to cut it short, but I got a couple bananas and a pot and we'll show you when I get back. I say we'll show you. This has gone too far. I will show you. It's just me here. Only picked up the necessities, of course. Beacon of self-control. You good boy. So I gotta do this fast. I got the pot. It's perfect, just what I needed. Not the right color, but it will work. I'll use this for my water guard instead of the brown one. Got two of these adorable banana trees. And what else? These bananas. These, um, I grabbed these and that pot. So you guys saw the pot. Well, this is a smaller version of the pot that I saw. And then a croton. These bananas are actually perfect. I was looking for two dwarf bananas to put in some planters and they had them and they were super cheap. And then here is a croton. The variety is called Freckles. Isn't it cute? Has cute little dainty foliage on it. I've never seen one like this before. I'm thinking it should color up not uh okay that's my cue to go inside i think this just came up on my phone so <laughs> gotta go <laughs> be back later i mean hopefully right okay it's the next day i'm alive I don't know what the deal is with those tornado warnings last night. It's like the sirens went off for a minute as they were saying there was a tornado basically here and then they stopped. And the, well, that went on for like an hour and a half and at first they're like they've confirmed, trained spotters have seen the tornadoes, that there were potentially two of them, they looked like they were rain wrapped and there was a debris cloud 10,000 feet in the air, like three miles wide. Like just this, these stories, it's like grandiose stories about what was happening, yet the sirens weren't going off. They only went off like two times for like one minute at a time. I was really frustrated by that because how are people supposed to know? I'm, I have a thing from the, uh, I have an app that alerts me and lets me know on my phone. That's how I knew. But what are people supposed to do if you don't even hear the sirens? 
It all worked out this time, but the problem with these big, grandiose stories with the tornadoes, with the tornadic weather, is that people don't take them seriously. And it's kind of like a joke in the Midwest, to, you know, when the sirens go off, everybody goes outside and has to see what's going on, which is true, I do it too. But I'm ready to go inside, and before I do that, I make sure all my animals and everybody's locked away in the basement. So I'm like ready to go inside should something happen. But it just, I don't know, I was frustrated, but that's thats the end of that rant. Everything's okay, I'm pretty sure nobody was hurt or anything like that, because they did actually like confirm some tornadoes, just nowhere near where they said they were going to be. So, <laughs> back to the freckles. Croton freckles. I don't have a ton more to say about it other than just, it's cute. I do think from the pictures that I've seen online with this Croton, that it should color up, like, not as drastically as like your typical Croton back there, but, still pretty cool. I think this would make a great hedge or something like that or something to plant in a corner or on like an angle where it can grow up and other things can be planted around the bottom of it because it just it has more of a kind of a refined quality to it by having the smaller more pointy foliage. So that's that. I like it. It's really cute. Okay I <laughs> hear my voice crack. We have a slight problem here. Nothing too serious, it ultimately just comes down to, it's hot and I'm tired. I need to set this guy where it just keeps getting blown over. I need to set it somewhere where that won't happen. Okay, problem number one, it's very noisy out. And um, I need to finish things up here. The, I live near a private airport, and there's going to be an air show, I guess, this weekend. And the blue, wow, look at that cloud. I know, very off topic, but it's so pretty. The Blue Angels, which I know a lot of people would be thrilled by it, but they practice right over my house. So like every few minutes, it's just so loud that you can't even think straight and the windows rattle. And so it's not like I'm not complaining because it's cool to look at. Not productive for making videos though. It's just been a very busy week. All good things, but like I've just, I've had a lot going on. Family have needed my help with lots of things and friends and whatnot. So I just haven't had time to get things done. I got these queen palms handled, which is nice. So, I mean, it wasn't a totally unproductive week. But, you know, I got these brown pots. I wanted to pot up the Edenidias. That's not happening. It's too hot. I don't, I don't have time. Not today, anyways. That will be the first thing that happens in next weekend's vlog, though. This lantana makes me so happy. Did you see this in the prior video to this? Nice, big, full plant. It's so dry, though. I've watered it a few times and still a little bit on the dry side. I hope you don't mind the blowers in the background. It's just like I cannot find a moment with quiet, so I'm just kind of going with it. Sorry about that, but we're outdoors, so kind of considering it gardening sounds. Just not the fun, tranquil, peaceful kind. I'm almost done with all my annuals. I'm ready to get some planters going in the front yard, my porch pots and other things going on here. I'm really into these New Guinea. Hi, Shadow. Look at the flowers on this New Guinea patient. Aren't they pretty? This is the, what does it say? Magic Pink New Guinea. Gorgeous. And they're humongous flowers too. And they have that kind of sparkly glow to them that New Guineas get. Hopefully, I don't kill them. I'm going to say that about all plants, really, right? It's just sometimes in the, like the heat, hot, hot, hot part of the summers, I struggle with these guys a little bit. I think it would be good this year to try and remove as much of the grower soil as possible because I think what happens is they have too much water retention and then that heat comes in and they just, they don't like it. You know, when people, my, my dad's really bad about this. Someone starts going with a blower and they just can't stop themselves. I do it too. But it's like, I just, I know that that's going to go on for a while. It's banana. Very thirsty. I cannot wait to get these bananas potted up. I'm really excited about that. Like, really excited. And just this weekend, though, I have more time to get things done out here, so I'll be vlogging the entire time. So there'll be a lot of stuff getting done, which I'm very, very, very excited about. Something just bit me. Look at those caladiums. Aren't they gorgeous? Perfect plant to light up a dark, shady spot in the garden. There was one thing I did want to talk about. I thought about doing, like, an entire separate video on this topic, but I kind of want everybody's feedback now sort of a moral, ethical, dilemma type situation in gardening. Carpenter bees. I'm not gonna be able to show you from here. It's not gonna show up on camera, but they are just digging their holes all over my house, like everywhere. There's at least probably a dozen of them. And last year I bought this like carpenter bee trap where they go in this hole and they fall down there. I had it hanging up for like maybe 10 minutes, a bee fell in it 
and uh, I saw it in that chamber and I just was like, this is horrible, I can't do it. I let it go. I just felt so mean. I was like, I can't just let it just suffer, just die in there. It's gonna starve and overheat. It just, I felt terrible about it. They're living things and I don't want them to go out like that. And they're pollinators too, so they're very important. That is something I take seriously. I do try and make sure that I incorporate a lot of things into my garden that the pollinators will enjoy and appreciate and benefit off of, particularly things like milkweed for the monarchs. And I like the bees. They're our garden friends. I don't want to hurt them, but what do you do when it gets to a point that they're causing structural damage to your home? That's not rhetorical. I really, I want to know everybody's opinion on this one because I am having a, a heck of a dilemma here deciding what to do. I just don't feel right about harming them or killing them, but they're eating up my house. I mean, I even feel bad about killing the mealybugs, to be completely honest. I'm not really a fan of doing it because, like, they're just doing their thing, living their life, living out their purpose, and then I come along and just destroy their world. I don't like it, but it's, it's a little bit different. The pollinators are so beneficial for the environment. I'm sure mealybugs have a benefit, too but I don't want to go too far down into that. Basically what I'm saying is just, I feel bad. I don't know what to do because they're important. And it's not their fault. You know, deforestation and everything, that's what's moved them into the suburbs and into the city and have them chewing on people's homes instead of like into the trees and whatnot where they naturally would be digging. You know what I'm saying? I have heard that you can try hanging like paper bags around where they nest and dig their holes and they'll kind of confuse it with a wasp nest and they don't want to do their thing near a wasp nest and that can help. Has anybody tried that? Let me know. Because ultimately I think that would be the most ideal thing, right? Would be to deter them as opposed to kill them. Oh my gosh, the blowing actually stopped. So that's kind of the question here. The moral dilemma. I don't want to hurt them, especially to a point where they have to suffer. I'm looking at the roof of my house because that's where they normally are. I'm not, they're not out right now because it's so hot. Yeah, when do we draw that line and say, uh, well, I know you're good for the environment and I want to support you and help you, but you're also tearing up my house. That's why I think, wow, you got thirsty. I just watered this guy. But that's, that's what I'm saying. It's a, an issue of right and wrong, really, and just being mean. I don't want him to suffer. And I don't want you to feel bad if you use those traps. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just talking about me and what works with me, my vibes, my energy, and I just, I don't want anything to suffer. I had considered using this again and putting DE powder in there so that when they go in, that will end things a little bit more quickly. But like I said, I want to exhaust all of the options first to just deter them and make them go away before killing them. Because, I mean, as gardeners, I'm sure everybody knows the pollinators, very important. I just, I don't know what to do. And that's why I'm turning to y'all. Get a conversation going. Let me know tips, tricks. I really would appreciate any feedback. And hopefully I can gather enough to maybe try some things out, do a video on it and whatnot. So you can, they're starting to kind of show up there. I still don't think that's really going to show up on camera. But there's a few of them up there. At many times of the day, they're everywhere. And they're, they don't bother me. They fly around and kind of check me out a little bit. <laughs> I don't blame them. You know what I mean? I haven't ever felt like I was in danger or threatened by them or like I was going to get stung. That's never been a problem. I've even been told that they don't sting. I don't know if that's true, though. I would imagine they have a stinger, so I don't know why they wouldn't use it if they felt threatened or that they needed to. Maybe they just, maybe their stinger's too little. So I'm going to pass that one on to you guys. Man, I really need to set up the camera and do a time lapse. These clouds are phenomenal today. So yeah, please let me know. I would really appreciate all the feedback on that one. This was something I had debated doing a video on last year, but I didn't just because I was worried it might be kind of controversial. Just like the whole entire measurement of valuing certain forms of life over others and whatnot. But I've just, I've decided to say, forget that. Like, let's make sure this isn't an argumentative thing. It doesn't need to be. Just a conversation. It would be helpful, hopefully to everyone. And I think that part of my hesitation is I always fear that, like, the conversation of, like, well, do you eat meat and all those things, which, no, I don't. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't either. There's just a really big spider on my hand, and I didn't kill it. He, he gets to live. It's just something I avoid talking about on here because I just, like I said, I don't want to ruffle feathers. Let's just stick to the carpenter bees. What do we do about them? Because even though they're destructive, I mean, it's kind of like with termites. They're destructive. I'm sure they have a purpose, but the carpenter bees are pollinators, and it's like, why... 
hold them higher than the other. See, now I'm the one starting the controversy. I need to shut up. I cannot wait for these petunias and the, the sweet potato vines start coming over those pots. It's kind of partially because it's going to hide the fact that they're inserted in there. Something has been biting me out here, and I don't know what it is. I would assume mosquitoes, but I mean, I've gotten kind of used to mosquito bites. I'm outside an awful lot. And on my face, it's leaving, I don't have any to show you right now, but like really big welts that almost feel like a cyst under the skin. It itches and burns for like a few minutes. And then just like these giant, it hasn't been pleasant. And I don't know what it is. There are these gnats flying around and some of them are kind of big. Like they're bigger than gnats, but smaller than flies. And wh whatever they are, something bit me yesterday right underneath my lip and it swelled up really big and it made it kind of... I'd, that's one of the reasons I didn't film much yesterday because it wasn't hard to talk, but I could feel my teeth rubbing on my lip and it didn't feel great. So, uh, anybody know what that might be? I've read something about midges. What are those? Do they do that? I'm not sure. Okay, that's enough. I feel like I need to stop talking before I really put my foot in my mouth about something. Because I want this to be an open conversation discussion with these carpenter bees. Like I said, tips, tricks, anything you have to offer, put it down in the comments. I want to talk about it. I want to learn about it. I want everybody to be able to converse. And maybe the, some people have some really great suggestions out there that are worth giving a try. I hope everybody's doing well. Aren't these beautiful? I'm going to pop these up in another video too. I have like four planters planned out that I'm going to try and film this weekend. I'm, I'm saying goodbye. Sorry. Bye-bye. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, these bugs. And subscribe as well. Hit that notification bell. I upload multiple times a week. Apologies for this video being all over the place. It's just, you know, it's a vlog and it kind of just goes along with what's going on in my life. And my life was crazy and chaotic this week. So that's just kind of how things go sometimes. Hope everybody is, I hope everybody's safe also. These storms have been pretty bad around the place. I know Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and it's just, it hasn't been super great for a lot of people. My goodness, what am I going to title a vlog where nothing happened? I guess I'll figure that out. Planted some palm trees and talked a lot. And the carpenter bee is, in my opinion, the most important part of this video. You can hit me up on Instagram. I have all my social media linked down below. Oh, I almost got a shot of one of those little bugs on my arm. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. Follow me and I'll follow you back. We can look at each other's pictures and have fun nerdy plant time together. This is just, it gets prettier and prettier. Oh, hey bunny. I see you. And like I said, comment down below. See, this is the other thing. It's really hard to talk when there's like a constant swarm of bugs around. I do feel like that kind of happens just about every year in the springtime. I think it has something to do with like the dog hair and the humidity and all the moisture and everything. It's just one of those things where you just kind of got to push through it. All right, say to comment down below. Please comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. How y'all doing? What's going on with you? Having a good time in your garden? Are your clouds phenomenal? These are so pretty. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.